TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Hamas is threatening to exacerbate the violence directed at Israel in light of Jerusalem's persistent refusal to capitulate to the Islamist group's extortion tactics by means of indiscriminate terror attacks against the southern communities of Israel. UN envoy to the Middle East Nikolai Mladenov warns that the deteriorating security situation vis-à-vis -vis the Gaza Strip signifies a trend which soon may become irreversible. Israeli Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi held a meeting with his German counterpart, Foreign Minister Heiko Maas in Berlin, during which he once again urged Europe to alter its policy with regard to Iran. The Palestinian Hamas organization, which controls the Gaza Strip, is threatening to exacerbate the violence it directs at Israel in light of Jerusalem's continued refusal to succumb to the Islamist group's extortion tactics by means of indiscriminate terror attacks against the southern communities of the Jewish state. After an Egyptian intelligence delegation failed to persuade Hamas to alleviate tensions on Gaza's border with Israel, Qatar stepped in by sending its envoy to Gaza, Ambassador Mohammed el Emadi, to try and broker an arrangement between the Islamist group and Jerusalem. Following two days of intensive meetings, however, the Qatari envoy traveled to meet with Israeli officials in Tel Aviv, yet according to TV7 sources, only several points of contention have been resolved. One senior Israeli official told TV7 that unless Hamas halts its terror activities toward Israel's southern residents, the situation in Gaza will incessantly deteriorate. Meanwhile, dozens of balloons trapped with explosive devices were sent sailing from the Gaza Strip toward Israel's southern region. Israel police spokesman Mickey Rosenfeld told TV7 that yesterday alone, 42 improvised explosive devices detonated in civilian communities and open fields, sparking numerous blazes across the country's southern territory. Police bomb disposal experts from the Israeli National Police are continuing to respond to explosive devices that are attached to balloons and landing in open areas as well as in cities. Heightened security is continuing. Yesterday we saw 42 explosive devices as well as fires that broke out as a result. And our units are continuing to be in every city and in open areas and communities to protect people. In related news, an Israeli man was stabbed to death yesterday afternoon by a Palestinian assailant in the central Israeli city of Petah Tikva, while the Palestinian suspect, a 46-year-old resident of the West Bank city of Nablus, who worked in Israel legally, attempted to flee the scene. Police units patrolling the area apprehended the suspect, and following an investigation, the attack was declared to be a nationalistically motivated act of terror. Police spokesman Miki Rosenfeld told TV7 that Israel had no prior intelligence warning of an attack while highlighting that heightened security is being exercised in the areas of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem in order to prevent any terrorist attack from taking place. Turning to a meeting of the United Nations Security Council where the world body special coordinator for the Middle East peace process, Nikolai Mladenov, warned that the deteriorating security situation vis-à-vis -vis the Gaza Strip indicates a trend which soon may become irreversible. Recently, the security situation in Gaza has also deteriorated, a trend which soon may become irreversible. It is essential that the ceasefire agreements brokered by Egypt and the United Nations, which have proved effective since August 2018, be reaffirmed. Mediation efforts will continue. However, I am concerned that militant activity, especially incendiary balloons, rockets, and a deteriorating humanitarian situation inside the Strip are rapidly eroding existing arrangements. The United Nations envoy further asserted that there is a moral imperative to bring about a political solution to the conflict, unity among rival Palestinian factions, and an end to the reign of militant organizations in the Gaza Strip, where the lives of two million desperate Palestinians are evidently being exploited for political interests. There is a moral imperative 
to end all militant activity in Gaza, restore Palestinian national unity, and lift Israeli closures. But the political solutions that must be provided by leaders are nowhere in sight. Instead, we have a day-to-day, month-to-month, year-to-year patchwork of crucial humanitarian efforts to prevent war and to try and sustain the lives of two million desperate Palestinians in Gaza. Mladenov further commended Israel for its apparent commitment to suspend its intention to assert Jerusalem's sovereignty over parts of the West Bank, which includes the biblical districts of Judea and Samaria, which, according to the UN envoy, any annexation would constitute a most serious violation of international law. Israel's commitment to suspending annexation removes an immediate threat that had the potential to append the peace process and regional stability. The Secretary General has consistently called for Israel to abandon these plans. Annexation would constitute the most serious violation of international law, effectively close the door to a renewal of negotiations and destroy the prospect of a viable Palestinian state and the two-state solution itself. Elsewhere in the halls of the United Nations headquarters in New York, the spokesperson for the UN Secretary General, Stefan Dujeric, informed the press on the latest developments pertaining to Israel and Lebanon following the exchange of fire between Hezbollah operatives and the IDF. The UNIFIL head of mission and force commander, Major Stefano Del Cole, remains in contact with the parties, urging restraints and requesting that all sides avoid any provocative action that could further escalate tensions and jeopardize the cessation of hostilities. The mission has launched an investigation and calls for bo- on both parties to fully cooperate with UNIFIL to help determine the facts. The situation along the Blue Lines has since returned to calm, and UNIFIL is maintaining continuous presence in the area in coordination with the parties. It is important to note, per senior Israeli intelligence officials, that the unusual retaliatory response by the IDF against Hezbollah observation posts in Lebanon aim to relay a clear threatening message to Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah, quote, if Hezbollah harms Israeli security personnel or civilians, the Iranian tentacle will face the full force of Israel's qualitative edge. One of the officials who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity emphasized that Hezbollah is under a magnifying glass if it moves against Israel, it may find itself scorched into the ground. Turning now to Berlin, where German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas welcomed his Israeli counterpart, Minister Gabi Ashkenazi, for his first official state visit, during which the two top diplomats reaffirmed the strong bilateral alliance between Berlin and Jerusalem. Es ist immer noch keine Selbstverständlichkeit, dass 75 Jahre nach dem Ende des Holocaust ein israelischer Außenminister Berlin besucht und dass äh, du, lieber Gabi, gerade jetzt hier bist, in dieser für Israel bewegten Zeit, aber in dieser Zeit, die für uns alle außerordentlich bewegt ist, das unterstreicht aber vor allen Dingen auch nochmal die Beziehungen zwischen unseren beiden Ländern. Among the topics discussed in their meeting, which also included a German official condemnation of the acts of terror employed by Hamas and Hezbollah respectively against Israel, Minister Maas welcomed Israel's latest actions to promote peace, to which Germany is prepared to do everything in its power to support. Und natürlich, es ist gut, dass die israelische Regierung ihre Annexionspläne suspendiert hat. Nun gilt es, diesen Schwung auch für den Nahostfriedensprozess zu nutzen, auch mit Blick auf erneute direkte Gespräche zwischen Israel und Israel und der palästinensischen Führung. Das wird, das wissen wir alle, nicht über Nacht geschehen, aber ich habe hier und heute auch noch einmal deutlich gesagt, dass Deutschland bereit ist, alles, was in unserer Macht steht und alles, was gewünscht ist, auch zu tun, um diesen Prozess zu unterstützen. I think it's very clear and it's very tangible that uh, Israeli government policy moved from annexation to normalization. I think that's an opening. Uh, that's real. That's concrete. Uh, and uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we uh, left the door open for our neighbors. Uh, now it's up to their decision and their choice to join. 
Uh, I think what happened with the UAE, it's a very strong demonstration that only through a dialogue and negotiation, we can make progress. Israeli Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi also seized the opportunity to urge Europe once again to alter its policy vis-à-vis -vis Iran. Giving the uh, behavior of Iran to allow them in less than uh, two months to uh, be able to get uh, advanced and modern weapon system and to spread them around the Middle East, I don't think uh, it's, uh, it's productive. And uh, we would like to see the European country, not just uh, the German, uh, German uh, uh, preventing it. It's not helpful for the, uh, for the stability in the region. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Uganda in prayer for its salvation and peace, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its economic ramifications worldwide. Furthermore, I would like to thank all of you who partner with us by means of prayer and finance. Since we are a donation-based ministry, TV7 Israel Productions would not be possible without your monthly dedicated support. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.